In uh, 1985, I had a very extraordinary close encounter experience that led to uh, the possibility of initiating contact by waking a lot of people up to the fact that they'd had the same experience. And, excuse me, they, uh, this image, which is on the cover of the book Communion, uh, was it was I had it painted and it was put on the cover and it served as a mnemonic device for millions of people who had had encounters prior to that and then when they saw that they thought my god it wasn't a nightmare or a dream it really happened and that is the basis of of the very large number of experiencers that uh, came into this field after the book was published in the probably in the millions where prior to that there had been just a few hundred i noticed there was something off in the middle of the night uh it was uh the uh i guess it was it, it was the morning of december the 26th and uh we'd had a post-Christmas dinner and a walk afterwards. It was a very, very beautiful snowy evening and very, we had a lovely Christmas, the three of us, myself, my wife, and our son. And we, you know, we went to bed and in the middle of the night, I became aware of the fact that there seemed to be a lot of noise and movement. And I opened my eyes to find that I was not in bed at all that I was in a completely different place in this little round room full of what I initially thought were big insects. And it's, talk about shocking. I mean, I wasn't expecting that. I naturally, I thought it was a dream of some sort. And I started trying to wake up and the harder I tried to wake up, the more it became apparent that I was awake. And, um, then there, there proceeded a, uh, a lot of uh, fairly uh, rough treatment because I was really fighting and struggling. They turned on a machine that said, kept saying in a very gentle sort of but mechanical female voice, what can we do to help you stop screaming? And the answer, one of the answers could have conceivably been not to try to calm me down with a mechanical voice like that. But it was it was a pretty scary and brutal experience. And I mean they didn't want it to be, but I was they were they were having a lot of trouble handling me because I was really fighting. And uh they they th this is where this story of the rectal probe comes from where which made my whole made being raped into my being raped, my experience of rape into an international joke, which I've endured for 30 years. I mean, it, you have something like that happen to you and, and people, people make it into a joke. It's, it's hard to stay part of the human world. I, I have been very tempted to disappear from the public view many times, but I feel I have a responsibility. Anyway, that injury is still with me. It will be with me all my life. It was severe. But it, it wasn't something that was done in purpose. It was, uh, they were, I don't know quite what they were trying to do, but whatever it was, um, it, 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 things got fouled up. And, and the next day I was beat up and I hurt and uh, I could not figure out what the memories were. They didn't make sense to me. And finally, after, uh, some soul searching. I went to the doctor and um, he said, well, you're telling me a story that you were taken aboard a flying saucer, my little men. And that was the first time that had occurred to me as, the, as, a, 
as a, any sort of an answer. And I said, my God, Tom, you're right. That is what I'm saying. He said, well, I think we might think about psychological tests and brain scans and, and all of that to, to, to see where we are here. So I took an MRI scan. There was no sign of a tumor or anything. Took a, a test for temporal lobe epilepsy, which causes vivid hallucinations. No, no sign of that whatsoever. Took a battery of psychological tests and they revealed a normal personality, but under a lot of stress. And all of that it, 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 it led me to think maybe it was a crime. And so I explored that direction unsuccessfully. And I was left with the idea that maybe it actually happened. Maybe it is possible. And I didn't, I was not aware, there was no internet or anything. And I, I wasn't aware of any, uh, anyone else ever having an experience like this. And my brother gave me a book called, I believe, Science and the UFOs by Jenny Randalls. And it contained a section which seemed to be very similar to what I remembered happening to me in a man called Bud Hopkins, who was researching this. And he turned out to live just, just a couple of blocks from us in Manhattan. So we went to see him and that's where I began to put things together. You know, after that, I realized that I said to my wife, I said, Annie, you know, I have to face this. This happened. And I had been trying to drive her away. We were fighting. I was very, very upset. And I was concerned that I was going to go psychotic and she would end up trying to raise a little boy with a psychotic husband in the hospital and not no money. And I was trying to get her to ditch me. And I said, to her finally, I said, uh, I, I, I was so strung out. I said, Annie, I have to tell you something. And I don't know what's going to happen to us after I tell you this. She says, of course, tell me, tell me. And I said, I think I was taken aboard a UFO by aliens. And she said, oh, thank God. I thought you, I, 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 I no, that wasn't how it worked. I said, I don't think I'm insane. I think I was taken aboard a flying saucer by aliens. And she said, oh, thank God, I thought you were going crazy. And which was a very unexpected response. But from that moment on, Anne took over. She ran the show. The, all of the themes in the book Communion the fact that it's even called communion and not body terror, which was my my title, it all comes from that lady on the up on the wall behind me, and uh, she she and she was she was so on top of it that I have to think she had some kind of connection with it on an unconscious level. She was on top of it from day one. The second hypnosis with Dr. Klein, which had been so amazing. It was the first one was just basically screaming my head off uh, and so panicked at what was coming into my bedroom. The second one was about the experience on December the 26th. And it was really just so vivid and so extraordinary. Uh, uh, I decided that I would, um, as I was walking home from his office, I thought to myself, maybe I will write a book about this. This is actually quite fascinating. And uh, by that time, Annie had, I, she, we were already together on it. And I said to her afterwards, I said, listen, what about me writing a book about this? And she said, oh, that sounds like a fascinating thing to do. And uh, I, um, so I started writing it. At the time, we didn't know there, there would be anybody much interested. I mean, we thought it was a very interesting experience, but there was, a, there was something else going on that I didn't fully understand at the time what would happen, that the book was intended to wake all these people up. Uh, I, I did not know that. 
But then after the book was published, thousands upon thousands of letters started pouring in. This was before the internet. So, you know, they were all written, handwritten letter. I mean, typed mostly, but physical letters. And they're all on, they're all preserved now at, at uh, in an archive at Rice University in, in Houston, which is great. Not all of them, but uh, thousands. Annie saved the ones that had the most complex stories in them. Then it, when we started to have people, she decided that she would organize groups of people to come up to our cabin and inter have experiences with the visitors because she somehow knew who to ask. She would say, put a letter aside and say, this one, we want this one up at the cabin. And when they came, they would have these amazing close encounter experiences at the cabin, it, it, sometimes singly and sometimes in groups. It was extraordinary. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, it's not a few aliens from another planet. This is the biggest, most extraordinary phenomenon mankind has ever realized existed. And we are just at the beginning of getting used to it. And I hope that our planetary environment doesn't fall apart on us before we get to, to get this thing into focus. Because if we ever get it into focus, we're going to be a new species. <laughs>